Don't be a flake, don't run away from your feelings, babe. Don't be afraid, don't be ashamed, don't hesitate to say, hey, babe, hey, babe, hey, babe, hey, babe, hey, babe, hey, babe. Bring me a hey, babe, love. Bring, bring me a hey, babe, love. Oh, bum, bum. Sam Morrill, everybody. Yo. Here he is. Yes. Yo. What's up, buddy? We love Sam. Oh, uh, dude, we were just talking about that, uh, like outdoor comedy. Yeah. We performing outdoors, and we, uh, I did the uh, Great Outdoors Fest in Calgary. It's supposed to be a one night gig. I, but then you're like, no direct flights to Calgary, and you're like, all right, no direct flights. I'm yeah. getting the night early. Mm-hmm. So I'm. Fine. I'm hurting. I land at like 2 a.m. I get the n- nice driver, but you ever get the driver who picks you up and he's like forcing conversation, oh, yes. but, yeah. but he's got nothing to say. Right. So he's like Shaggy, the musical artist is here tonight. I'm like, oh, cool. You like Shaggy? He's like, I have no opinion on him. <laughs> <laughs> like, then why are you bringing him up? Right. Yeah. So I'm like, di- I'm so tired. I'm like, okay, cool. I'm like, tr- I'm trying to like, uh, just like him. carry the conversation <laughs> yeah. at 2 a.m. I pass out. I, uh, I had a brutal flight, by the way. I literally, uh, the flight there I thought I was going to miss my connection. I had to con- do the connection through Canada, so you have to go through customs uh, oh. on the connection. Yeah. The, the woman sitting behind me screaming, like she's drunk, she's screaming, she's a stage mom, apparently, I find out later, because I turn around, I go, you got to quiet down. And the guy, some guy tweets, Sam Arell just cursed me out and tagged me. I was like, I cursed out the lady next to you. Yeah. <laughs> you think you would see that? So, yeah, I saw it, because I was tweeting how much I hated her. Yeah. And then... Uh, <laughs> and then we get. I, find, I barely make the connect flight. I'm hurting, so th- I'm there that that day. Outdoor fest. I'm like fucking. I'm like. I'm like. All right. The air quality here is bad. I'm opening the show. Theo Vaughn is closing right. it, and uh, is it, like, it is, it's not. A, is it a comedy festival? Or it's is a it, festival outdoors. It's a music festival. No, it's comedy. It's oh, like it's this, a pure comedy festival. It's it's a really cool. They, they it's run really well, but it's outdoors and it's like 7,500 people. You know, mostly there to see Theo. I had some of my people there, but. Uh, we get there, I'm like, dude, the air quality sucks. And Theo is like, nah, man, it's cool. <laughs> Literally 30 minutes later, our agent calls us. It's like, this, the province has shut, da- shut down everything. Oh, this was semi-recently. Huh? Yeah, this oh, was like yeah, two week, oh, yeah. This is like two weeks ago, three weeks ago. So I'm like, what do you mean? It's like, no show tonight. The air quality is at threat level eight. So I was like, oh, my God, all right. You know, so they call us and they say, look, uh, oh, God. they want to know if you'll stay another day because they think the air quality will get better. And I was like, yeah, I'll stay. And Theo's like, yeah, man, we'll stay. Yeah. So now it's day, we're three days in now, okay? Right. So day three, it's still at air quality eight. And I'm like, oh my God, dude. Like, this is worse than it was yesterday. I'm like choking on the air. We do the show, goes great. You know, we're hurting, whatever. But uh, the next day, <laughs> we fly back. My agent's flight gets canceled. My Connect flight gets canceled, so now I'm stuck in Montreal for the night. Turns into four nights. Oh. Wow! I get shit faced in Montreal. I'm pounding booze, and our agent, who's a who's a shark, yeah, sure. Like, do you want to do a pop up show in Montreal? Turned into a great great night no in way. Montreal. You did, a pop-up did you do show? the pop up show? show? Oh, yeah. sick! It would turn into a great night, but yeah. Oh my god, these out. So the thing about the outdoor shows now getting canceled. It's like we couldn't perform indoors for two years. <laughs> now we can't perform <laughs> outdoors. <laughs> I feel like I feel like my agent's gonna call me. Like I got you a submarine gig. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you can't do that not, either. Not now. a Titanic submarine. The <laughs> yeah. Regular, regular right, yeah. submarine. You know, those things implode. <laughs> what is Montreal like without the festival? Because we Great. always usually only go up there for a comedy Better. festival. Really? What's Times Square like during COVID? Right. Phenomenal. Right, exactly. People have gone, no, the festival's too much. I yeah. love it, but it's too much. It's too much. Montreal without it, awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I went, to, I went, I've been just for JFL, but outside of JFL, I went for a bachelor party once and I was walking the street. I saw a group of like really tough looking guys like walking down the street and I was walking. And I'm like, all right, let's see. If these. It was like, I was like the weekend. It was night. Everyone was drinking. So it was like, yeah. you know, it was like all the people drunk walking the streets. I'm like, all right, here comes like a, a group of street, street toughs, you know, <laughs> like maybe like five, four, five guys and they were big. And then when they walked past, they were like speaking French <laughs> and it was so disarming. <laughs> I was like, oh, I could beat all of them up at once. Yeah. Probably. Yeah. They were just like, zoo, zoo, zoo. Yeah. I don't know French, but you know, like poly or whatever. But <laughs> it's it's weird to see a guy that you think like could probably rip your head off, and then he's like, but some of those French dudes know Krav Maga. Like some of them, like oh, you yeah. think of French dudes. As pussies, 
Because of the scarves yeah. and the cigarettes and the, yeah. that's like British the guys. War record, but you know, like if you ever go, like you've ever been like to like the, like some of like the bad neighborhoods in like London. It's very similar to the bad neighborhoods in New York. It looks the same. It's yeah. the same type of setup, but everybody has these British accents. So you're like, these people are very smart. Right. They're very intelligent. <laughs> They're not going to hurt me, and, but because it's just their accent. But that it, it, it's a wild thing. Um, to think when I, every time I've been in a bad part of London, I'm like, I'm fully safe, but you'll get, and the, the thing in London, you won't get shot, you'll get stabbed. I'd rather be shot. I think yeah. I would rather be shot to death than stabbed to death personally. Oh, if you're talking to death. To death. If you're going to, I'm, yeah. No you're question. Taking one or the other, though, a shot, and I don't mean through the heart, I don't mean it's going to kill you. But let's say a shot through the shoulder. Okay. Like in the movies, like, you know, you don't, get, or one, one full stab somewhere. I'd rather, ne neither, I'd rather Neither's going to have you die, neither. Definitely shot, I'd rather. Shot, just so much quicker, the whole idea. And it's cooler story. Right. I got stabbed, that can mean, I've been pricked. People, it yeah. doesn't mean anything. I stab, yeah. like, this is, shot sounds cool. How do people like 50 Cent get shot nine times in one shot and, and, and they don't? I mean, is that like, it just literally, is that luck? Like nine bullets missed every important part of him? Vitamin water. Yep. That's the way to do it. <laughs> <He's>, <laughs> right. he's, he's, you're so right about the accent, though, because I was watching that Netflix show, uh, Down for Love. Have you seen this show? It's it's people with Down syndrome right. looking for love. Oh, but right, they're right, in right. New Zealand, and holy shit, is being a Downs in New Zealand a better look <laughs> That's, than, in, than in America? They yeah. sound, it just sounds better. Right. Oh, because of the accent? The accent. They sound less Downsy. Seriously. Yeah. <laughs> let's, pl let's play some New Zealand Down syndrome. Uh, <laughs> yeah. No, I was watching. I was like, oh, they're like barely dead. There it is. Yeah. It's great. For me, it's really important to find See? love because that's what makes you right. human. I'm looking for love of a girl who is brilliant. Oh, he's Spanish. Beauty both inside and outside. My puppet man could be funny. Generous. I wouldn't, generous I wouldn't be able to discern kind. if this wasn't just a normal thing. Exactly. Slim wow, nice. Blonde. Are you romantic? These would be CEOs People in America. I, I, I hope they <laughs> Yeah. So I guess so. Yeah, I'm down for love. Yes, I am. Wow. Maybe not that guy, but the other ones were, they were crushing. Yeah. Companionship and affection. Is it, how's the show? I know. And be I, it's fine. I, it was, look, it wasn't my choice to watch. I'm in yeah. a relationship. Right, right. And, oh, uh, yeah. She yeah. was like, we need to watch yeah. it. And I'm like, That's one of the, right. as soon as you said that, I was like, Sam wants to go public that he has a girlfriend. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> yeah. well, she's, she's, one like you're women, not she's one of the women in this show, actually. And then we, uh, it was no. the woman yelling behind you on the flight. <laughs> well, one of the women in the movie, in this show is, uh, she's like a movie star in New Zealand. A, with Down syndrome movie yes. stars. Yeah. So she's in a movie, but she's in a relationship with a guy who's not, who's not Down syndrome. Right. Yeah. Right. So I was like, that's, and is that okay? I don't know. Oh, yeah. like, oh, I, I don't know the rules. Am I, am, I, am I alienating all your listeners with this topic right now? No. <laughs> no, no, no. I feel terrible. No. no. You just mean that someone without, could be susceptible to someone preying on them, maybe. I don't know. Yeah. But then you're like, are they weaker? I don't, that's not fair. I don't well, know. Well, because then that becomes a problem. Let's say this New Zealand actress gets really, really famous, like, huge blows up and they want to make a movie about her life does that actress then have to have down syndrome to play her or do you have someone wow. make play down syndrome that's the thing well i think remember that giovanni rabisi movie where he played yeah and it just like that's a big swing dude yeah i mean it's like the robert downey jr thing in tropic thunder yeah. you gotta go full you gotta just go gotta for go it full, yeah because yeah, nobody talks about robert downey jr in blackface as there's no issues with that people complain about it yeah but I mean, it's, they're it's, annoying people but it's not so robert downey right. jr's fault right like, I don't know. Like, sometimes even with comedy, when I'm like, if I make a joke, if I write a joke that has, like, a topic where I say something crazy, and then you attack me for that joke, I don't understand what the difference is between that and then if I just wrote it and put it in a movie or a sitcom and I had an actor said it or I was the actor that said it, that nobody attacks that. It's weird. Because it's all the same thing. It's yeah, just doing comedy. No it's an art form. There's no difference. It's just the medium which you're consuming is different. But it fully affects the way human beings react to it. There's like, no way for there's no one for them to attack. You know oh, who did it? the writer, the director, the actor? How right. did I reach them? You're standing on stage with the mic. It's you. Right. right. Well, also when you. Ted Danson did that, he got a lot of shit. Remember, he what did blackface. Do? At, uh, but didn't he do it with Whoopi Goldberg? Yeah, but still, if you do that next to a black, she co-signed it. I, I know. Guess, I remember. It was, I'm not. Look, it's. I'm a white dude. I feel like that's black people's uh, argument course, yeah. there. But that like, was a big controversy. But I think like I don't, with comedy, it's like you go up to the line. Sometimes you hit. Sometimes you miss. I found that movie hilarious. I thought Tropic Thunder was a great yeah. comedy. I, I still I never seen it. 
You've never seen I've it? I've never seen There's a lot of big funny. movies I've never seen. I've never seen Godfather. I've told you this. You've never seen Godfather? No. Yeah. no just, I don't. You don't need to watch one and two. Just watch three. Just watch, just watch three. Yeah. Right, the third fine. is really yeah. good. Yeah. Three is good. <laughs> that's where it takes off. <laughs> <laughs> it a third. Andy Garcia. Forget Pacino, dude. dude that's yeah. where it... Speaking of... You got to watch Godfather. So seriously. my boy's yeah. group chat, like my group chat from my friends from home, yeah. it is has... Is it named anything? Um, we call, Some of my group chats are named... Oh, oh, like you mean name them? Oh, uh, that, that one. No, that one is not one of the group chats I'm in with them. is called the Scum Bunch. Okay, but one yeah. of from the, they used to call the Mets the Scum Bunch. That one's not named. But <laughs> they they started sending me as soon as the wildfires in Maui happened. Mm. This is how you know like what kind of friends you have. I have conspiracy theorist friends like hard like they are all in. Like with everything is a conspiracy. As soon as they the Maui wildfire is happening, right away one of my boys is like, "Don't believe this. Do not believe that this could just happen like that. This is direct energy weapons. I'm sure of it." Within like 20 minutes of this breaking news, and I I jumped in. I was like, "This one I'm gonna have to say you're an asshole for. There's no way like it, it's it, it." And now all the they're testing energy weapons in Maui. Well, now they're saying that now What's the a direct energy weapon, a laser, a laser. But as time goes on, there's a lot of people that are saying now, like they're trying to disprove that it's not direct energy weapons, but the internet now is showing like what they think happened and how, and firefighters are coming on saying there's no way the wildfires could have went the way that they said it and blah, blah, blah. So I just don't know what's going on anymore. And well, also- let me tell you something. <laughs> as, a, as a Jew, we, we control a lot of space lasers. This one was not us. Okay? <laughs> that wasn't, yeah. We sat this one out. So. <laughs> yeah. well, well, the big part of it is that Oprah's house was miraculously saved and spared from the fire somehow. Right. That's like the conspiracy part of it. Right. Did you see the thing where uh, it's all the articles that said Mark Zuckerberg and Lauren Sanchez donate $100 million to the Maui Re- Relief, and I'm like, it, or not Mark Zuckerberg, Jeff Bezos, and right. it was Bezos. Yeah, we don't need to throw her name on there. Yeah, we don't need a that talk about adding your name to the card. That's a yeah. little, yeah, it's a little aggressive. Also, yeah. why did I say Zuckerberg? Jesus also, Christ, it's, it's, a, it's the biggest natural travesty ever, right? Yeah, this could be the biggest million? wildfire in world history he with have the most deaths. Deeper than a hundred million? His yacht's five hundred. Yeah. He gave them twenty percent of his yacht. But what is yeah. he worth? He's worth Pimpy. What is what is Bezos worth? Is it fifty? Is it fifty five like billion? Two hundred and fifty. Oh, two hundred fifty billion. So hundred million of two hundred and fifty billion. I one hundred. He's worth one hundred and sixty. So, so one sixty. That's like. So uh, what percentage of his income? What what would it be? We tried to figure this out. Yeah, yeah. What what would what would it be? So one hundred is one tenth of a billion. Right? Okay. So then there's six hundred and sixty billion. So it's. 16 one hundredths. Of, when am I doing this right? I don't know. It, I, I, it would be I, like if you or I, I gave this. like a fifty dollar gift card to Outback. Yeah, this is what, to, yeah, this to, is, right. Well, we you know what we calculated the last time. <laughs> yeah, we did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. There's I, gonna I, be I a lot of tragedies. Right, you right, don't. Right. I mean, he's gonna have plenty of upcoming, you know, weather related yeah. tragedies to oh, donate to. Here's the other big one. This is the other big one. Did, did you see this Malaysian flight? Thing? Yeah, have you with, seen this with, one? With this conspiracy? Everyone slaves to Allah. Oh, that one? Huh? The guy with the guy stood up and said, "You're all slaves to Allah." Um, no, that was, that was a Malaysian was air flight. Uh, yeah, a guy. And they had to reroute to Sydney because this guy stood up and was like, "You're all slaves." To you were Allah. on the flight? No, no, oh. no. I was like, "Holy!" Shit. No, it was a news story though. A guy stood up and was yelling, "You're slaves to Allah!" I immediately hit the call button. And then, he, <laughs> and then he opens a backpack and takes a Koran out, which like. I would never have been so happy to see a Koran in my life. Like, oh my God. Yeah, yeah. Thank God for a Koran. <laughs> I thought that would be something else after <laughs> all this Allah talk. That word should not be allowed on flights. I'm Allah? sorry. Let's let's start an atheist air. Yeah, yeah. Let's keep religion out of the sky. <laughs> yeah, yeah. None of us uh, none of us can pray unless turbulence. Then you can yes. pray, but that's yeah. the only time. Only time. Yeah. No, this one is saying that Malaysian flight uh, 370, which like just disappeared, like they could never find it in the ocean. It happened in 2014. I watched. That, it. I watched the. Uh the, the documentary. It was sad, the sad. saddest thing I've ever seen. Very sad. But they're yeah. saying, like, you know, because people were kept getting calls, like, from lev- from yeah. people on the plane the days later, and it was like this phenomenon. But there's video that the government just released now from 2014 showing the flight going, and it's got thermal radar, and then three orbs going around it, and then it looks like it goes into, like, another dimension. And, of course, your first instinct is, like, this is bullshit, this is bullshit. But then when you go on the Reddit and look it all up, it's all this government people Where being like this. Where was this footage 10 years ago? 
ago. Th- that they the government kept it under wraps, but with this whole alien Congress thing over the last couple of weeks, they've been releasing footage. This, they've is, been releasing, this is government approved footage. This is, so that's real. Those orbit. Or, this is all real. Yeah. And so, they didn't have. They didn't. Ha- they had this the whole time. Yes. And they weren't giving answers to the. No. Things no. Or? Look, you'll wa- watch. It shows towards the end. It'll show it. It, that that is uh, that's all been you know supposedly confirmed. Um, this it's yeah, all that's like a green cartoon plane. No, but it's like therm. It's in the middle of the night, so no, it's I like know, see. And then Whoa! It just, look at that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you what, see somebody's what, what watch. Happened? It just they think it goes oh, into be kidding me, some, some type of like Come other on. dimension. Come on, that's real. That's what they say. They say that it's it's real. But and what about? Did you watch the documentary? There was like twenty theories because of all the other weird stuff that happened before that. Well, they said that they and now the if you go deeper into this Reddit, they yeah. say that they they eat the little pieces of wreckage that they found are either government planted that or there was some debris from this type of. They think it was either a portal or they 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 have no idea. Oh, guys, all I know is I haven't seen a pilot disappear like that since the writer's strike. Am I right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to, to double back, I was, I'm working on, I was, see, let me know if this is a bit you think. I was, uh, to double back on the uh, uh, fucking uh, accents. Yeah. Right. You ever watch in porn? Yeah. And it's good. And you're into it and stuff. But then after like a minute, they speak and it's another language. Yeah, <laughs> I'm like I feel duped, and then yeah. I'm like I have to change this. I can't I, do. I, I'm not into it. I can't do it if it's yeah. another language. I can't do yeah. it at all. And even uh, the only way that it works for me is if they speak like they have to speak English, but like broken English. If they're in their language, it just takes me. I'm like oh, too unrealistic. This? I'm like what is this? I don't know what they're saying. Because you're trying to put yourself in the main character's yeah. shoes, and you would never sleep with someone like you can't picture getting her in the bed. If she doesn't know the language, yeah, I, 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 you know? I the, 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 the speaking's part of it. Yeah, I can't just. I, I don't know what's going on here. I feel out of sorts. I and I also you find out like a little late, and then you're like you're like this is. I feel like I'm I feel, rock I hard feel and confused. I feel duped. Yes, yeah. I feel yeah. duped. Yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't I, want to jerk off with also but looking really, at Babel. Do, do you do you, can, do you really <laughs> agree? Like, could you do that? And like, oh, it's another language. I can't. I never. I have to. For the two main reasons why I just say I can't watch this video is language barrier and if the man has a small penis. Those two things I can't I can't do. It. Like, why are you here? Yeah. Well, because again, yeah. when you want to envision yourself doing it, this guy's small penis takes me out of it. I don't want to think I have a penis as small as him. It's like if Woody Allen was in an action movie. <laughs> like, right. I don't want to see this shit. Right. Put the rock in there. Yeah. No, it's true. What is this? Italians, uh, aliens who attack Peruvian tribe? So on TikTok, all this stuff went viral because um, Peruvian people in the jungle were being attacked with machetes by aliens. Right. But it was actually illegal miners dressed as astronauts with jetpacks. What? Mm. I don't know. Something's going on in Peru. Oh, the yeah. Jerusalem Post got the hot tip on this one. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> you guys catch that story on the online Jerusalem Post <laughs> about the Peruvian tribe with jetpacks that posed as mine? <laughs> like, what the fuck? Yeah. I can't. I can't anymore. Yeah, I can't, I, I I think, can't anymore. I, can't. I think that may be a bit, though, what you just said. Yeah? Yeah, yeah maybe it's a, maybe you, maybe that's like porn. Ros- that's how we like combine porn with like Rosetta Stone or something. Right, right. 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 Think about right. how smart we would be if we were jerking off while learning French. Oh, that's probably we're seriously. Yeah, because we're sponges. At that. We're sponges. hundred percent. Well, you're never more attentive. That's when you listen, right? Yeah, right. yeah. I Look at this. See, I mean. think this is fake. Do you guys think this? this is fake? This woman is creating a new gender, and she identifies as trans financial. For me, it's clearly fake, and just she's <laughs> doing a bit. But people are getting actually what mad at her mean? in the comments. You hear? Here she goes. So I identify as trans financial, which means that I am a rich girl stuck in a broke girl's body and that is one of the hottest things that i have to deal with in life hottest get, the, get out of here it's dude. it's a bit but i but come but, on but the but thing is cried. but the thing is with this is people now like on the comments like they really are taking this seriously and they're like is this just another kind of thing now we have to you know yeah. not disrespect oh i get it because i'm transatlantic Yes. I feel like I have to fly to Europe, but I don't want to. I don't want to. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Trans Financial sounds like a really exclusive bank. Exactly. Yeah, it does. It, it sounds like except so- uh, Caitlyn Jenner. She's I know. The only member. It sounds She's like, like 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 a stadium tour on Burt's fully loaded tours. He's doing Trans Financial Field. <laughs> <laughs>
Um, yeah, I think that it's it's. I mean, this is what happens, though, is like you have a movement, you have something that's like doing a good thing that's actually helping people, but then so many other people co-opt it and do what they want to do with it that now you can just say anything and you've like thrown the baby out with the bathwater. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's a good good use of that. Right, baby out yeah. with the bathwater. When was the last time you said that? Baby out with the bathwater. I've said, I actually said it yesterday because the people, uh, I'm sorry, I said it this morning because the people were selling our house and the people who said that they wanted it came for an inspection yesterday and then it turns out they didn't want it because they said that there was some structural beam issue which is probably bs and then i said i said i think that they're you know basically having one minor issue that we would gladly pay for wasn't that much money to pay for it we would gladly pay for it but instead they've decided to throw the baby out with the bath water and wow. just walk away from the house okay that's yeah i like when yeah. you lose uh yeah like like yeah. phrasing like that. Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. fun. Yeah. I, I, I I've been as I've been getting older, I've been talking to my mom more. And my mom, she go I used to talk I talk to my dad a lot still, but I've been talking to my mom more. My mom is, is big into phrases like that. Baby out with the bath water. Um she'll say what's cooking good looking a lot. <laughs> um she'll say uh what's other one she uses? Oh, she calls a hallway a vestibule. That's old school. She calls a fire hydrant a Johnny pump. What's yeah. the uh, one there's something rotten in Denmark? What is it? You ever hear that one? Yeah. I was I just watched True Romance the other day and they say that more than once. What's so it called? Something rotten in Denmark, isn't that yeah, the expression? Rotten, I don't know where it's I don't know what, what that, that means, is. but it's kind of fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 It's like yeah. this doesn't add up, this is bullshit. And rotten it's called Rotten in Denmark? Yeah. Yeah. I know that one I never heard. Yeah, something's rotten in Denmark. That one I never, I've also fun. never been to Denmark, but I'd like to go. You ever go? Denmark, Copenhagen? I don't believe so. I would love to go there. No, you have the comedy there or anything? No. Isn't there festivals and shit there? You ready for this plan though? What do you guys think of this plan? And it's already been it's already been confirmed by my family that they're in next June next year. The Mets are playing the Philadelphia Phillies in London. So Whoa. I was going to go there to do a couple of shows in London before the Mets Phillies game. You know, I would go. You know, have fun. My friends from home will go. But then I was thinking, what if I just got an Airbnb in London and I just stayed in the UK for the entire summer, brought my family and just used London as like a home base. Like I'm living in New York and then on the weekends go do shows in different parts of the UK and just like spend my entire summer in the UK. And I brought it up to my family and they were like, we'd love to do that. And we just get one Airbnb home base. And then during the week, travel, see different places and then go on the weekend, go do shows. And that's how it kind of, you pay for the trip. Is that a stupid idea? You sound no. like a transatlantic. That right? You have to bank yeah. a lot of these, though. You have to. That's the thing. A summer, so we're talking about twelve, to at least twelve apps, right? I'd have to bank that, or you could take a summer, or you could just take a summer off of pods. Oh, your fans ain't liking this. All right, saying. fine. <laughs> <laughs> They're not liking this. I like let, me, idea. let me tell you something. Oh, yeah, that was overworked, like a motherfucker. <laughs> but you know, uh, London's great. I love. I, I just did gigs in London. It was fun as hell. Yeah. yeah. Turned into a little trip to Greece. London is amazing, but you, you lose, you know, what's funny when you travel, you lose all your status. So I was like going through security there. I, I have global entry, but I forgot to get in the line. I'm doing all the, I had to take all the shit out. They confiscated my fucking lube when I went through. Wow. Which, uh, well, that hurt. Yeah. I, I, what do you well, have lube for? <laughs> why gonna, not? Why not have lube? It's going to hurt even more now. <laughs> <laughs> really? You think a guy we need lube? What about a little spit in the hand? I, I find that I, I I'm you're a, not a spitter. I'm a giver. I I, I like it to be uh, natural, sensitive lube. I'm a th I, I think about the other person. So you lube to begin with, not if you need it. No, I mean why not? I you lube to masturbate? No, it's for sex. The other person. Yeah. Okay, no, because I wasn't. No, because I don't know. Because I, oh, I, oh, that's right. You were with her. I thought you were just with Gary Veter. Just when you're like, well, well Peter, now for him too. <laughs> he, he rubs it on his opening head. set. <laughs> <laughs> He's got to pay. <laughs> it's so nice to have your friends on the road with oh, you. Oh, it's the best. Yeah. yeah, Vita's with me next week. Oh, did yeah. you bring Vita with you to the UK? I didn't. Yeah. I didn't. I, I no. It's uh, I, I I bring him domestically. I bring him everywhere. Everywhere. Yeah. I brought James. <laughs> Matt. Domestically. Yeah. Yeah. Not He's like a cat. You don't get to see the bright lights of London. <laughs> yeah. I was. Only, I only did a couple gigs there. I feel like in London too. Every time I'm there, it feels like you know, like like they've almost. They're such an older country than than us because there is something to like they're like us as people as American citizens we have like a way of thinking when we're here and like you know we get influenced by like the politics of the day or whatever but the, london is they've the uk has been through all this stuff already they're so old so i feel like they're a lot less stressed out 
over there. Like every time I'm in London, it's like very calming yeah. and relaxing because I just feel like they don't, they're not all about like every dollar, make it, ev not everything's about money with them, yeah. which is, it's about like having more balance. That's what I think. At least, I don't know though. I could be wrong. I could, I'm also there for like a week at a time on vacation drinking <laughs> pints every day. I think day, that's what it is. Loaded. I, think everyone, I think everywhere you go, everyone's stressing about money, but I think, you know. Yeah. It depends uh, on your mentality when you're yeah, there. Your yeah, your mentality. Yeah. 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 I, I'm, I agree. I, like, I feel good when I'm, out yeah. of the country because I'm never out of the country. London. Did you fly? To, you fly. How, what is the flight to Greece from London? Like an hour, two hours? It was short. That's what's amazing to me is like you can be in a city like that and then you can just fly for a weekend and be in a completely different culture. Where here it's like you have to that you, it's going to take right. six hours for you to get right to anywhere right. from there. Yeah, interesting. Where'd I want to live. Greece? Where'd you go in Greece? Santorini, Athens. Oh, oh my God, I missed the wildfires by like uh, like about like uh, two weeks. They were like, I wouldn't go to the Parthenon today. I was like, please. It's not, I mean, like, this is like the most American thing to say. I'm like, I've been to Phoenix. You know, that's my <laughs> attitude. I'll tell you what hot is. Yeah. yeah. You know, uh, but yeah, oh my God. I mean, it was, it was, they killer. got a Parthenon mm. in Nashville. <laughs> in the park over there they have a replica <laughs> i'm good oh good no, greece is that's why they live so long that food is so healthy man healthy like, and yeah and then and it, they balance it out with the cigarette smoke yes but yeah. but speaking of that yes they do live so long and because we have you know uh venetia venetia is greek here off camera she's but here's the here's the thing now what's happening now Pimpy, I sent this in your text. I found an article that said women are starting to die now because of over alcohol use, because of the boozy brunches and because of the, you know, f w fine wine night. So women are starting to die now in a way higher numbers than alcohol. Deaths increased by 14.7% for women. Is everywhere. Everywhere. What? How many brunches do you think that is? Women are really starting to, I mean, women are starting it's to get bottom, smacked. It's, it's the, the funniest way brunch. to die, though. It's the business model. The doctor just comes in like, did you go to brunch on Sunday? <laughs> <laughs> How many mimosas did you need? <laughs> no, I mean, it's, what, a, what an embarrassing death sentence. Because it said like women, they, you know, I, there was like this common misconception, like women can't get cirrhosis of the liver, women, but it's, it's, it's not true. So... Watch out, ladies! <laughs> Watch out! <laughs> You're all. I mean, we were drinking last night. We, us and our ladies, were we were we got yeah. we got drunk and Sal came over yesterday and we got hammered in my house. We finally did a, a non-work social. Yeah, need to do you this. Need to. We were like, we had to like, let's do this. Right? Yeah, we the woman and I did it was, that in Montreal, and we were still kind of working, but we were like able to get drunk. Yeah, and yeah, we were drinking, stuff. smoking vape pens. We had a good time. The kids you were vape? sleeping upstairs. I did yesterday. <laughs> it was good. We were, we're very adult. We were like sitting in like a around like we were in a conversation room, not TV or nothing. Yeah, by like the fireplace, and we're sitting in chairs, like facing each other, like talking and drinking yeah. wine. Dude, drink eating, te eating, eating tiramisu. Yeah, the kids. The ki my wine and vaping is the funniest combo <laughs> ever. That's everyone shits on the vape like, person, but when you're hammered and someone hands you a kiwi mango, it does feel <laughs> nice. Right? It's like, oh, what? What vintage? Is this? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it was good, man. I'm, yeah. And I gotta tell you, from the vaping and the smoking weed yesterday, which I don't, I, I've been doing it more now, but. Not, I don't do it that much. I had a bit of a hangover today, but I felt so much happier, like waking up and like coming, driving into the city. I felt like, like it definitely did something to my mood. Like it stabilized my mood where I was just happy. And even the hangover, I was like, just deal with this. Just where it's where if I didn't have the weed, I think it would just be the depressed presence of the alcohol lingering and I'd be like so down on everything but I wasn't that way at all I think it's because of the weed and I've been microdosing mushrooms I have that I, I, yes that, that psilocybin yeah I'm telling you dude it does Can something do I don't microdose. microdose I love by the way you're talking about like women dying from brunch and you're like I drank I smoked <laughs> weed I shroomed you it was keep a nice adding social drugs. night it wasn't much but needed I can't do psychedelics I don't like drugs that hide in my awareness I like to I, I'm in my head too much so I like to uh, I like to push everything down when right. I, when I, I don't know. So what drug is that? Alcohol. Oh, I feel like you just kind of silenced the, well, I, I, I weed, I used to do a bit about this. How like I smoke weed. It's like I had a party in my head and only the worst people showed up. <laughs> That's how I feel. But alcohol, I just feel good. It's just like a positive voice. You yeah, know, how many day, nights though. in a row, what do you think your record is in your life for nights in a row? You've gotten drunk nights. In, you're like you've been drunk. <sighs> what is the record for you? Unfortunately, like probably pretty high. But what is it? What but do you think the number is? I don't know. Maybe like 
I don't know, not that. And lately, I'm I'm so much better because I was like sick the last week, so I kind of you know I don't drink when I'm sick because I don't want it to keep going. But uh, <laughs> I thought things were looking up. Like, lately, I'm better. Last week, I was sick, so I couldn't drink. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it sounds like you're getting better. Well, the problem is we have a Mark and I have a drinking podcast, yeah. which you guys have both been on. Sure, I love that show. Drunk? Yeah, and we you know we get day drunk, and I tell people like they cheered. We did a thing in Montreal, and I was like, I hope you're fucking happy because it's killing us. It is like taking yeah. a toll on our. Health. Well, also you have you guys have your own whiskey. We have a whiskey bodega cat, uh, which is available bodegacatwhiskey.com. dot com. Thank which you. I, I have at home and I I drink. I love it's bodega good, cat, dude. It's good whiskey. You know, it's uh, it's tough Best to stay. Problem, problem with a podcast where you drink is like, it's. It's required drinking. I like right. when I'm like, I choose to drink yeah. right now. It's like tough when you show up at 2 p.m. on a Tuesday and they're like, we got to drink again, yeah. dude. So we, we, we're taking it a little easier lately, but... Uh, so you can't drink every podcast. Well, you have to have a drink every podcast. Yeah, but we sometimes, might, every once in a while, drunk. we have might, a sober might. guest, and if we have a sober guest, we'll be like, we have Joe List on him. He doesn't drink. We're like, all right, we'll have coffee. That We can do coffee this yeah. episode. Yeah, uh, you could change it, too. Yeah. But it's hard. I mean... We might they change it your friends scene. is so fun because I'm always like I shouldn't drink and then you're like one and a half two in and you're like I feel amazing yeah, yeah two is right that's it I mean you're at two and you're like all right what do we do but see I like what we did last night I had one or two tequilas yeah. a little bit of red wine so not too much alcohol that's just a little bit but then the weed and I felt like I was fu- like I'd rather have less alcohol now I'd rather have like one drink yeah and some weed some edibles or something like that and then just. Close, but I can't control the eating. Yesterday, after you left, I ate two uh, tiramisu cups and another three slices weed. of pizza at midnight. And you already broke your fasting. I, was, just I, didn't even, I threw the fasting app out yeah. the window last yeah. night. But you're yeah. looking ripped, man. You're looking. Like yeah, you're... but it's not. You have yesterday. I was. I, I, I woke up today with puffy nipples. I was a puffy boy this morning. Yeah, you got it. You got to release it though. Well, that's the thing. I, I feel like what's been happening. You think that, the alcohol comes out in the morning through both nipples? Through both. Yeah, yeah. yeah I milked it. Yeah. I, I. You got to have balance though. You can't always for so many months for almost a year now. Every day I've been like not deviating from fasting only once a week. Blah blah. blah but I'm like you can't fucking live like that. I mean, but you do, you look like a young Charlton Heston right now. Thank you. You do. Yeah. I, I, uh, I don't, I, I, well, I, I feel, I walked here. I've tried to, you know, v- Vanity and I were doing uh, Chris Trees at my podcast studio, and she, you know, was like, are you going to give me a ride to, the, hey, I said, absolutely not. I need to walk off my alcohol. I'm walking it off. And so then you when t- I, you walked here from there today? I right? did, but, but, how I far walked, is it? Uh, what is it, a mile? A block, about a block. Yeah, two blocks. But then I stopped. But then I stopped at this market, Roger Hill Market, something market. And I said, I'm just going to get myself an iced coffee. And then what I wound up doing is I sat down. I had the iced coffee. I was like, just let this iced coffee hit you. You got a couple more blocks. You're going to feel good. Get balanced. Before you know, before I left, I had eaten a pepper cheese croissant, a bacon, egg, and cheese on sourdough, and a blueberry muffin. No, you can you you, well, you in have, one like, sitting. It's a problem for yeah, you. The, the yeah. food is like you're it's like, like a binge. It's like it's, famine. No, no, seriously. Uh, the, the people on my Patreon were like, dude, like not. Even they're not even like you have an eating disorder. You do. You have the definition of an eating disorder. You cannot. You you so so the fasting helps me with like not get out of control. But fat. Then sometimes you just have to go. But nuts. then it's like it's I have a full of eating disorder. But, How did I do? Like I don't even know why I did that. I wasn't conscious at it's all. Probably anxiety. You probably have anxiety. You probably have, oh, yeah from all anxiety. the weed I'm smoking. I got enough for both of us. <laughs> but you know, but I think it's got to be related to food. You must have some like it's must be some coping thing from let's trace so back. Fast, let's trace back your relationship with food. Okay. You know what I'm saying? But let me ask you a question, though. When you're so into a, your body is diligent because of the way that you set it up because you're fasting and you do that and you dump all that in you, do you not like feel like you want to, do you, does your body not shut down from all that? Like it's like a 4,000 calories at once when you're not even used to eating that kind of stuff? Yeah, I, I, I don't well, you, look, uh, you look fine. I don't know. Yeah, actually, it makes me feel like happy and like I am who I'm supposed to be when I do things like that. <laughs> Like Dude, I, you know who you're supposed to be is <laughs> Brendan Fraser and the Whale. That's, yes. your, that's your true self. <laughs> Have I you seen it? No. Go I be the- that movie looks like an exercise in misery, yeah. which by the way is the only time they say exercise in that movie. But, uh, <laughs> no, it just like movies where it's just like he's a uh, 600 pounds. I'm like, I don't want to watch this shit. And actually, I wound up. I was watching it on a flight, and I watched like the first 30 Sad, minutes, right? and then I just kept fast forwarding, and it's the same scene over. It's just him fat, you know, with his trying to rekindle with his daughter, but the whole movie is just set up in his basement because he can't move so i'm like this movie's stupid and then at the end he like floats away into outer space i'm like what a dumb wait, ending. Wait, wait, wait. to find the malaysian plane <laughs> yeah, yeah. that's why i did it yeah. you were joking at the end or did you just give a complete spoiler about the ending what do you mean he floats away you he gotta see dies, it right i'm what guessing he floats away he, in space they they float they do, 
you don't. The ending is up for interpretation. He get. It's like I this, can't tell if you're breaking my shoes. No, I swear. Uh, yeah, there you go. Breaking my shoes is yeah. is predates breaking my chops. Yeah, yeah. I um no he I don't know yeah he just floats away it's like a big oh, beam of light and I don't know, I'm like did this guy get abducted by aliens or is he dead I don't know I have no idea at the end of the whale yep he floats away into space in a beam of light not space but he yeah he's like he floats up yeah yeah, if, yeah Google the ending of the whale oh, an image boy. it's stupid the whale floats away yeah it's, it's very hey, dumb. regardless you do have food related anxiety there's something you should talk to a you talk to your therapist about no this? but I want to download that app Noom. Because they say Noom is a good app that helps it you. It changes the psychology of how you approach food. It's not a diet. It's a way of life. So you don't, you don't feel stop, bad after stop, you uh, eat all that I do. I show, do. So. I feel horrific. Oh. But I think it's the same way maybe how somebody would like binge drink. Yeah, I just then, do it with eating. And you deal with the hangover. I got right. you. And I just deal with. So for me, I'm like, well, I'll go work out today. I'll try to have a salad. I'll try to balance it out. But I probably won't do those things. I'll, It'll probably get worse. But how often does that occur? Don't beat yourself up over that, especially when you're <sighs> no, so well, diligent. Well, now way less. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, it happens yeah. way. I think this, this used to be the way I lived. Like, this used to be just the way I ate and lived my life always. I was doing this every day. Yeah. You've been svelte since I've known you. And always I've known svelte. You Sammy's svelte. How do, you, uh, how do you stay svelte? Uh, a lot of basketball, yeah, like in the used park. To, yeah. Uh, I, do I you mean, not overeat ever? I, I eat, but I, I eat pretty healthy. I'm a pretty healthy eater. Like I'll, really? I'll, I eat a lot of, if I'm at the cellar or something, I eat like fish or like kebabs, you know? Yeah, right. I want, I want to, I, yeah, I don't eat, you know, I look, I'm a, I'm a New York Jew. I definitely eat bagels and I, I like my, you know, carbs. I'm not a, I can't cut out carbs. There's people who are like, cut it. No, I fucking love. But I you're love not New eating pizza. desserts and pizzas and cheeseburgers that much. I usually, yeah, I usually, instead of dessert, I, I don't have a, the biggest sweet tooth. So I usually crave like, like a Negroni or like a, right. or like a old fashioned or something. I, I like I like alcohol. So uh, right. But I, I've never seen I've never uh, seen you uh, all years. I know you. Been like, oh, you look like you put on a little bit of weight. Never, never. Uh, That's hard to do. I'm sure some of it's metabolism, like you know. But uh, I just. Uh, <sighs> You and Mark my, are the most ripped podcast. Mark is ripped. I'm not. Mark is like Mark looks great shirtless. I look like fucking. Yeah, I look Mark, like Mark. Used Mark start, is ripped. Going to the gym and then all of a sudden he would take a shirt. He has like a six pack. Oh, Mark is completely ripped, shredded. Yeah. 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 Well, Mark doesn't eat bread. He like doesn't like bread. He, he has oh, so like a Mark, weird reaction. Well, the way you feel bad, he feels bad after he eats bread. Really? Yeah. So he just eats. He, he's keto all the he'll time. He like wraps and stuff, but he doesn't like like big. He doesn't do, I don't think he does bagels or pizza or anything, which I can't, pizza is a thing, like, especially in the winter, like, you smell pizza late at night, coming, you know, I'm like, dude, I, I need, I need a, pizza. You need to yeah. eat pizza. Yeah. It's like the most, I eat New night. York food. I love New York food. Yeah. Yeah. I, I can't live without pizza. I can't live, I can't live without pizza, and I really can't live without chocolate. Those, I, I just need those things. I love chocolate. Pizza chocolate was the biggest thing. That's what we had last night. What about when you go to the clubs and this, the menu is god awful? Well, I'm with what Gary Veter on the road usually, who's the biggest food cunt on the planet. Yeah, I'll like, eat him. He probably doesn't do this to you as much as he does to me, but he li always is like, he's like, he's like, bitch, you better pay five stars. He's like my girlfriend, essentially. <laughs> he, we'll go to places and he'll be like, this is, this food's not good enough. Like, he'll get angry. Yeah. He researches the city. <laughs> the, Gary doesn't care about my health either. Like, we were in Phoenix one weekend at Stand Up Live, and I was like, I should have canceled the shows, but I just never cancel if I can move. And uh, I'm on the couch, like passed out ill. Luckily, I'm not a high energy comic, so I just go up and talk like this, but which is not a great sales pitch for my shows. <laughs> but, you know, I, but I just talk Tom, like guess this. Guess if he's really sick or not. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm dying. I, I'm like chugging. I, at one point, I pick up, I over pour tea, and it's you know boiling hot, and I and I pick it up, and I'm like, oh shit, and I'm just burning myself, and he's pointing and laughing at me <laughs> as I'm burning myself. I pass out. All he can talk about is you were supposed to take me to Pizzeria Bianco this weekend. <laughs> I'm like, I can't move. I'm fucking sick. He keeps saying, you promised he's Pizzeria scorned. Bianco. He sounds he's, like my eight-year-old. He he, yeah, he's he such can... a little... He's such a, he, every, time he, every time we hit the road, he goes, I found a restaurant. It's going to cost you big time, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> and I can't resist making him happy, so I always do it. Oh, it's so funny, man. Yeah, I mean... Man, Gary doesn't... Gary will want to... The, anything. He right. literally pitched a show to me called Gary Doesn't Miss. He's like, the show is I pick the restaurant, you pay for it, and you pay for all the production costs. <laughs> I'm like, 
you know, there's people who do shows like this with like culinary backgrounds. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you you're just an asshole. You're not you. You have no food what credibility. Is it, genuine stakes I can see as a web series. Gary doesn't miss. You pay. You have to be dead honest, and he can go as long as till he misses. But then when he misses, something's gonna that's, happen to him. See, that's the show. See, see how is he never is. misses because he it, doesn't miss, and he he doesn't miss because he just picks the highest rated restaurants. Right, 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 right. I mean, it's easy to not miss if you're right. like this is a fucking. $80 entree or right, whatever. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, it should be a good piece of fish or steak. You know? Yeah. I, yeah. Uh, this guy said he lives on a cruise ship for 300 days a year because his bills are cheaper than renting. Could you imagine living on a cruise ship for 300 days a year? What bills do you have? I don't know. The, all right. All game right. time. Yes. Game time app. I love it. Game time lets you buy tickets to major events, sporting, concerts, Broadway at the last minute for the best price. They guarantee their price. You can check out where your seat is online so you can see the view you're going to have. They have flash deals. Yeah. I mean, we Dude, love game time. Forget planning months in advance. Game time has deals on tickets right up to the day of the event. The game time guarantee. Let me tell you about the game time guarantee. Tell me about this it. is awesome. You will always get the best price. If you find tickets in the same section and row for less, Game Time will credit you 110% of the difference. Just slap Sal. Just slap me right across my face. That's what it is. And that's it. So stop uh, waiting until uh, planning months in advance. You don't have to do that anymore. And I actually get grabbed uh, Lionel Richie at Madison Square Garden seats Game Time. Boom. Yeah. They because have, he canceled he and then he read. And then I, and then and I was like, yeah, 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 yeah. You've been having a lot of fun lately without me. I just want to, we'll talk well, after. We should, we should join forces. Snag yes. the tickets without the stress with Game Time. Download the Game Time app. Create an account and use code HEYBABE for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code HEYBABE for $20 off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets. Lowest price guaranteed. All right. This show sponsored by BetterHelp. If you've benefited from therapy, BetterHelp is right for you. Whether you're dealing with decisions around career relationships or anything else, therapy helps you stay connected to what you really want while you navigate life so you can move forward with confidence and excitement. That's right, babe. And trusting yourself to make decisions that align with your values is like anything. The more you practice it, the easier it gets. Yes. If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely done online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. All you got to do is fill out a brief questionnaire, get matched with a licensed therapist, switch therapists anytime for no additional charge. So let therapy be your map with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash HeyBabe today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash HeyBabe. Trusting. See, my alarm just went off. And what is it saying? Have a BetterHelp appointment in just about 10 minutes here. BetterHelp, what you what I love about it is when you trust yourself to make decisions that align with your values, it's like anything. The more you practice, the easier it gets. That's why I use BetterHelp. And like Sal said, go to BetterHelp.com slash HeyBabe. Going to get you 10% off your first month. Go do it. I love it. And I love when you repeat things I said for emphasis. What's up, everybody? I am on the road right now. Just announced a lot of dates for my tour. They're on sale right now. You can get tickets at salvolcanocomedy.com. I'm coming to Bowling Green, Cincinnati, Toledo, Wilkes-Barre, Wilmington, Macon, Savannah, and Athens, Georgia. Uh, I'm coming to Peoria, Rockford, and Springfield, Illinois, Cedar Rapids, Duluth, Appleton, Rochester, Davenport, and Elkhart, Indiana. Gearing up to film my special in Chicago uh, in December. Tune in next week. I will give all the information about the special taping. But until then, SavileCounty.com, and I'll see you guys on the road. What's up, everybody? I'm so excited. I'm back on the road after three months off. Now's your time to come see my new hour that I'm doing. I'm proud of it. We're going to film it as a special this year. This weekend, I am in Atlantic City, New Jersey at the Borgata. And then in September, I am in Los Angeles, Portland, Seattle, Las Vegas, New York City. We got some tickets left for the theater at Madison Square Garden, September 23rd. And then in October, we're in Nebraska. We're in, uh, 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 um, what's the other state? By ne Can Missouri, Kansas City, St. Louis, Hammond, Indiana. We're coming all over. And then we got November, December, January, February dates. ChristyComedy.com. Really proud of this new hour. Now's your time to come see it. Go by the Tiki Wikis, baby. Yes. 
And let's talk to him about merch real quick. Yes. Real quick, ready? Let's talk about merch, baby. Let's, let's talk, talk about, about you and me. me. Let's talk about all the hey, babe, merch you could have on your body. Let's, let's talk, talk about, about merch. merch. Wow. Wow. <laughs> oh, my God. Blacked out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we just re-upped on some merch. This isn't it. But, yeah. Uh, <laughs> that's it. But that is. Shout out Prince Paul. Sal is wearing blackface. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, guys, check out. Wait, how do we, where do they get merch? No no press press com. Com. Z kid doesn't get easier than that. No press.com. Go merch. get the merch. Go get the. I don't know. Pimp. Oh, that that. I don't know. He f lives on a cruise ship. He should. <laughs> He lives on a, he, he Get him on the Impractical Jokers cruise with January Eric Andre. January 22nd to the 26th, 2024, coasting with Eric Andre, going to the Bahamas for Miami. We're booking it up again. Whoa. Now the hangover's yeah. starting to hit Damn. me. Damn. Yeah. That's going to be starting to get hit. You, you've been on the cruise. I, dude, I, I remember doing the cruise. The shows were actually pretty good for a cruise show. Like the, Your crowd is cool. So yeah. I remember we did one show, and my favorite memory was getting off stage. I did a show with Rich Voss, and, who I love, and... Uh, someone walks up towards a point to me and she goes, you were my favorite. And Voss turns to me and goes, oh yeah? Well, your other friends are prettier than you. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, damn, locked and loaded. <laughs> who were you, you on? Was that you? Who were you? It was me, Luis Gomez, Tim Dillon, Ari, uh, Bert, oh, Bert. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mike Vecchione, Yamanika. It was a really good yeah, crew. Yeah, that's fun. That's a fun lineup. It was yeah. a lot of other people. It was so fun. No, if you want to go on again, let me know. I don't. Okay. I can't do. <laughs> I can't do both, and it, it's not personal. I love you, no, Bert. No. Bert wanted me on his too, yeah, and I was yeah, like, yeah. I can't. I will die if I go. Like the way you're worried about food. If I go on a cruise with Bert Kreischer, I will not survive. Right. Yeah. Bert yeah. is Bert is built different. Yeah, I toured with him for an extended weekend. It was me, him, Nate, and Kyle Kinane. Oh my god, and, that's uh, fucking crazy. Yeah, and we would wake up every day and get to the airport like at the crowd, and he. He would sit at the bar and drink at the at the airport. I mean, I'm not I'm not outing him. He just took a pint of beer down another pint before we got on the flight. He had three or four beers. It was unbelievable. It's but then incredible. he would get on the flight and be the party of the flight. He get on the flight on his own, pick up the phone, and just start talking to the whole the whole plane. Like he didn't even get he wasn't even allowed. I was like, you didn't get arrested. Everyone just left. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's I he's just shirtless him. in first class. <laughs> 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 He I, just picked up the phone. No, he's the most fun yeah. hang. I mean, he's he's insanely fun to be around. Yeah, that was the, that was the, I would tell you the time we were at the Chicago Theater on that trip, and we get into the we we all arrive, we get up to the green room, we sit down. This guy and there was a guy in there sitting already. Figured it was he was one of them, or I figured he was with the venue or whatever. So we get in there. Someone's ironing a shirt. We're talking. Someone's making a drink. We're in there twenty minutes talking to each other, just the four of us and this guy. Real personal stuff, and then like twenty minutes in, the kid goes. I go, oh, how, who are you, uh, who do you, who, hi, who, how do you know, what do you, who do you know? And he goes, oh, I got to be honest, man, I'm just a fan. <laughs> and we oh said, why? God. He goes, I'm just a fan. I go, you don't know any of us? He goes, no. He goes, I just snuck up here. I just wanted to sit, hang with you guys. Wow. And we all thought he was with the other person. He stayed with us for like a half hour. Well, that's what happens when you hang with like a party animal. The, yeah. Those right. dudes find the way. I remember... Uh, years ago, I did the Borgata with Dave Attell and Jeff Austin when they were like, you know, Bobby doing Mike's. their, their co-headlining thing when they were kind of like st just starting it. And I go to Jeff Ross, just anyone he would meet, he would be like, uh, you know, oh, just come to the show, come to the show. And he literally anyone would be like, he, he just walks around in the social and, you know, Attell is kind of just like hiding from everybody. <laughs> so I go to Jeff Ross's room. I shit you not, there's like 60 people in there. I'm like, how do you know him? And they're like, oh, we're accountants. We met him at a sandwich shop in Philly. And I'm <laughs> yeah. like, what? Yeah. And then I go to Dave Attell's room. It's just him alone with a cigarette. <laughs> and he's like, he's like, oh, God. Oh. And, he, and he doesn't want to deal with any of it. Like, you know, Jeff's family would come in to say hi. And he'd be like, this is my aunt. And, and Dave would be like, oh, great, another aunt. <laughs> <laughs> you can tell he was just like, he's like just, everyone's got their pre-show ritual. Like, yeah. Jeff wants to be schmoozing. Atel wants to be writing, you know, yeah. it's like. I think I'm in somewhere in between. Me I don't, too. I it can meet a couple of people, but I can't. I, 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 I you got to like have five minutes of just like, I got to center myself here. Local yeah. shows are maddening. When oh you do local God. to like when you're friends and family and they all come and it's like tons of guests, that's insane. When you're trying to like focus and it's just like all your friends, all your family are there. It's just like. Well, I got, I'm doing Atlantic City this weekend. That's Borgata. Yeah. Borgata? Borgata yeah. For, for Friday and Saturday. This week, yeah, this, show, this episode comes out tomorrow, right, Pimpy? Yeah, so yeah, I think there's only there's a couple of tickets left for the Friday show. Saturday's gone, but fucking awesome. You no, know, Borgata, it's fun. It is a fun room. It's fun, and um, and the room is actually kind of good. Yeah, for, as far as casinos go. Yeah, it's 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 yeah. not bad, but that one is 
it's like a close, it's like a home gig, but everybody's going to AC to party. It's like Vegas, you know, close to New York. So that one's tough to deal with because not only will I have to deal with my friends and family coming, but they're all going to be coming in drunk and wanting to do things and wanting me to get them into things. And and so like that is a, like a big, I get always get over anxious when I'm doing shows in AC because everybody, especially me, Staten Island, it's like yeah. everybody goes to it's AC. Uh, yeah. So it's like I've already, like I woke up this morning, I had six texts from six different people asking if there were any, how do I, it's the same. How do I get tickets to your AC show this weekend? <laughs> How do I do it? I'm I like, have, just will you shut never, up? You've never no, used, just shut you've, up. You've never used the internet before. Yeah. yeah. Any time, just know if you're listening at home, and if you have a friend who's a comic or you get into, how, how do I get tickets? We know exactly what you're doing. Just ask for tickets. Just, I'd just rather. Ask. I'd rather you honestly just say, listen, I know we barely talk, but I want to use you to get tickets into a show that I don't want to pay for. So if you could do that, just email it to me, you piece of shit, and you would get the tickets quicker for me saying that than you, me, you trying to beat around the bush what, of what you really want. What about this one? What about, hey, I went to get tickets, but it's sold out when it's not. That's that another. That's, I, hear that's I don't get that oh, as much. It sold out so fast. I went to get tickets, sold out. I'm like, I look at my thing. I'm like, there's 700 seats left. I got a good what are you one for you. About? Yeah. I did a show in uh, I did a show in uh, Huntington, New York, at the Paramount. Paramount, I love the Paramount theater. Yeah, so down in that, and that, I get uh, a hit up for comps. Easy. I get hit up. Oh, dude, that speakeasy. Yeah. But I get hit up for comps. And what do you think is an appropriate number to ask for comps? Okay, Two. honestly, what you're saying uh, is this Two? a family Depends member or close? Friend? Not a family member, not a person I don't know well, but he does. He he's not our money guy. He's a separate guy of another guy who handles like stocks and stuff. Two, two I would say two. Four, four is really nine. pushing it. Four. Six, call the police. Yeah, he asked for eight. Wow. Oh, yeah. No, God. that that's a federal and indictment. It gets, it, gets, <laughs> it gets better. I tell my mom because I'm like, I don't know what the, is this like. In, and my mom is. That's like, funny when it. Gro- my mom goes, "Give it to him." Is what she says. Really? And my tour manager goes, "He's a dick." So I'm, I'm like, the tour manager deals with tickets more. My mom is like, he handles your money. You got to always appease people like that. Okay. Right. Speaking like a Jewish stereotype. Of course. I like it. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> just whatever he wants. But and it's like, then, don't they feel like, like they can, aff- like, why not support you? Why not support you? How well, that? that's whatever. I, I'm fine giving tickets. But once yeah. he had eight, and here's where it gets better. He goes, I can't make it, but my eight friends oh, would, would like I to come. I know that one too. Uh, and I'm such a piece of shit. I Adam, fucking gave it to yeah. him. I, out of. I can't. <laughs> no, listen. But at least he told you. You ever happen where they and then they, they just show up and they're not there and they go, "Oh, where's fucking like John?" And like oh, he, he couldn't make it. When it, when they, he they don't even tell you they're not coming. That's happened to me too. It's brutal. Yeah. Yeah. It's but also like I think like four is is like the big number. I think that's like the four. You know. Yeah. Any th- four, four. Listen, unless you own the stadium, then it's like that. I guess there's somewhat of a difference there, but like actual. Like the actual artist, comic, musician, if you ask them specifically for the tickets, that's a lot. But I guess if you're like, in a, I guess even if you ask an owner of a stadium or an owner of a team, that's too many tickets too. I'm sorry to the Cohen family for always asking for Mets tickets. <laughs> you, know, you, you know what you're going to be dealing with too? Day of. Even the people who gave tickets to day of. Uh, or, well, I know it's at Atlantic City. Sometimes they're like, where is it, where is it again? Where's the oh show? My, What's the, the address? Or even better, like it's like seven, seven, five o'clock. Like, hey, what time is it? Yeah. I'm, I'm just just looking. I, I was have, doing I the Beacon friend. I was doing the Beacon Theater last year, you know, big sh- biggest show I ever did in New York. And my mom. We all, the, we all did that. We're all, that was a big Beacon, for all Beacon Boys. Yeah. We, my mom, uh, my mom, like the show's at seven at like five thirty. She was like leaving. She goes, "Hey, honey, have a great show." She goes, "Do you want me to bring your mail? I have some mail at the house. Do you want me to bring it?" I'm like, "Yeah, that's what I want. Give me my yeah, cool, cool. mail that from, on from a car loan from eight years ago that still has your address." You uh, admit, you're in the middle of your set. She hands you a Mount Sinai bill. Yeah, thanks, thanks She's, for that. Yeah, yeah. yeah what dude, are all these antibiotics you have to take, honey? <laughs> Dude, I, it's insane. Well, my mom, what she does too now, because a lot of the mail still goes. I'm 38 years old. A lot of the mail still goes to her house, you know, because it's like her address is still on my license, whatever. So there's times where hospital bills will go to her house and she'll bring them to me, but she opened them and she retapes them. I'm like, this lady's <laughs> looking. And I'm like, mom, I know you're taping. And she's like, well, you're my son. I have to make sure your health is in check. You I'm like, you're, I said, that's what I said. I said, I can arrest you for that. She's like, who's going to watch your kids? I was like, you're right. 
<laughs> I was just in uh, St. Louis, right? And I was like, I passed a weed store. I'm like, oh, let me get some weed, you know? And I went in, I bought the max allowance. Whatever, right? I don't want to go back. It saves me trips. So I was going to take it on a plane, but like 25 of them were pre-rolls, and I didn't want to go through a thing, and they see 25 joints. Then it might be a red flag. Usually I, I, I go with fla- like an edible or whatever. So I'm like, let me mail it. All right, I'll just, I'll just mail it. So I went to- Is that okay to do? I don't think so. <laughs> So I, I don't know. I don't think so. But I, how is it not? I'm a, it's me, it's me, mailing to yeah. me. It's legal there. It's legal here. I mean, let's not. Let's not. Listen, if the po- listen, if the post office can steal yeah. ballots and lose ballots, they can. Yeah. <laughs> let's, listen, let's not split hairs. <laughs> not to be trusted. Let, let's not you should have done it from Georgia. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I was saying, so I so I put it in a box. I wrap it all up and go to FedEx. I, I ship it. I, I spend money to get it overnighted. It doesn't come. Four days later, it finally gets it. I had to call, complain, get a refund. Gets to my house. I take it. I open it. I so half of the weed was gone. What? And the box was retaped back up. Scumbags. So it smelled like it smelled like weed. And what what this person at FedEx did was probably like, "There's weed in there." They didn't know what else. They knew there's weed in there. He can't report that because he's not allowed to do it. I'm going to open it and take it. And when he opened it, it was all weed. And he had to leave something in there, and he took. They took. They took three hundred fifty dollars worth of weed. That is insane. And taped it back up, and I was like, "I'm going to call FedEx," and I'm like, "I can't." I'm like, "I don't care. I'm still going to call him. I'm going to say what I did. I don't care. We're both Good. Go down." Wow. Seriously, yeah. remember, remember the old head, uh, Hedberg joke? I like the UPS guy because he's a drug dealer and he don't even don't know, know it. it. Yeah. <laughs> That's crazy, dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. man. That's crazy that is. That they can how much uh, weed? Uh, amount of money of the weed did they? Three fifty. Yeah, dude. I feel like that's. I wonder if that's you can federally charge someone. Also, I'm joking. True. <laughs> yeah. Well, dude, how about here's the thing. Here's the thing with you know we trust you know people who are working in FedEx or you know when you go to like a, an office or something like that. Like they, so many people have full access to your address, your way, everything. It's just you have to trust that they're not going to do anything. Somebody, I went to a doctor for nothing, like a bullshit. Just like bl- blood pressure, I, I'm on blood pressure medicine. You just got to check your blood pressure every few months to like still see if you need the medication. I still do, and 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 the I walked in. It was like a, a you know regular doctor's office, and uh, one of the guys behind the counter recognized me. He was like, "Oh, Chrissy." I was like, "Hey, what's up, bro?" And then I go in, whatever, nothing. He says, "Bye," nothing, you know, whatever. Like three days later, I get a, a screenshot oh, DM to me. No. From this guy, he's like open about it. He's like, dude, you don't have bad cholesterol. Your numbers are fine. And then, and I was like, you're not the dude. What? That's the f- against so many I was, things. No, I was like that. You lit. I mean, I'm not the kind of guy that's like, you're done. You're fired. Right. But like, I told my social media guy, I was like, respond to him and just say. Dude, that's not cool. You did that. Don't do that again to anyone that you recognize. I'm like, shocked after you telling us your diet that you don't have bad cholesterol. <laughs> that is insane. That's I know. the craziest well, part of well, the story. That's the thing. When I go to the doctor, I'm like, I'm intermittent fasting. I lost all this weight. The doctor be like, hey, you look good. And then cholesterol is still 390. And I'm like, yeah, well, because in that six-hour fasting window, I just eat cake with my hands. <laughs> You're like, I eat the cholesterol. <laughs> yeah, yeah. People like, are oh. boundaryless. I know. People well, he, are- his, my doctor's approach to me is like, Let's with you. Let's just tackle one thing at a time. We got the number down. You got back in the gym. So now the fasting is good. You got that locked in your mind. Now in that window, let's try to get more vegetables, less cheese. And then so it's like little by little. He's like, "This is all we got a five year plan." You're in good shape, man. You're in great You're shape. You're good. But the pl- my blood my blood pressure is actually much better. Shout out Losardin. Uh, my blood pressure is good. I took it. Yeah. 127 it over well. 70. 127 over 70. Yeah. First shot. Not bad. I take mine all the time. Cholesterol is going to be a nightmare, but. I'm on like eight medications. I can't. I'm not guy. What what medications? Like, I'm, I'm on. Uh, uh, you're a very neurotic Italian. Ant- yeah, I'm, yeah. Uh, you're, you're like more. Jewish who's not even Italian? Italian. I I I, yeah. I swear to God, the people that I I literally relate to the most, I think, are like older black women and older Jewish men. Yeah. Anyway, uh, yeah, I'm on <laughs> antidepressants, <laughs> antidepressants, and I'm three different blood pressure medications, and now I'm, I'm I'm doing something for my ADHD as well. But I also take a lot of vitamins, you know. Yeah. But Gotta yeah. take vitamins. I take I take athletic greens. That's not even a plug. Athletic but I just greens take is vitamins, though. Yeah, that's good. It. That's why I take it. I just want it done immediately. I hate the done. taste. But also, that's a good thing about... I've come to like the taste. Doesn't I break so, a fast either, athletic greens. That's, that's true. Me. Does not well, break a fast. The good thing about... Uh, I started drinking so young that I think I just like... I like the kind of nasty taste. Like... You know, I like the liquid NyQuil. I like right. the liquid, the yeah. liquid uh, yeah, uh, that antibiotics. Shot before bed. It's like, I like dude, it. Dude, my yeah. daughter, my yeah. little one, she we gave her Motrin once. Like it's like bubble, bubble gum flavored Motrin. She cries like almost every day, and she's like, "Oh, Motrin." She wants Motrin like 
outside chalk milk. I'm like, you can't just have medicine every day. But no, that's it, how it, Motrin gets the children. Seriously, yeah. but now, yeah, we. T- <laughs> but now, if she's even like slightly got a temperature, we just give her the Motrin. Wait till they come up with bubblegum uh, fentanyl. Oh yeah, <laughs> that's the good stuff. <laughs> you thought it was good before, guys. Yeah, baby. <laughs> this is fucking. This is how we get the ki- the kids hooked. Now on you're it. positive. We talked about this last night, but you're positive that. The weed that we buy in these weed shops, which are technically legal in New York, cannot have fentanyl in them because they are packaged by a company. There's no way fentanyl could slip in. Yeah, yeah. You know, no one opens packages at the post office. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> yeah, I mean, look, you got to go to a reputable place to make sure you buy a reputable brand. And all the information is on a sticker on the box. It's sealed and it should have a barcode and should have a manufacture date, a strain and, and a serial number and all, all that right. stuff. Does that help? Do you guys both smoke? You said, do you, does it help your anxiety or does it make it worse? Uh, I felt better about it, my anxiety. For the most part, it lets me turn off my brain at night and, and go to sleep and relax. Mm. But there are times I smoke and I get neurotic and paranoid and I have to pull myself back. But I'd say, you know, most of the time it's it helps. You're by far of the Jokers the most neurotic. When I watch the show, oh, it's oh, like not, it's even, not even, cl- no, there's not even, a it's thing. not even close. You're the actual yeah. most, but Murr just as a physical being looks the most neurotic. He looks like he yeah, would yeah. be. Yeah. yeah I'm, no, I'm all jacked up, man. I, I was talking to Jessica Kirsten once. We were talking about like, oh, how comics are all usually are all messed up. And I was like, I was like, no, but not me. You know, I, I just feel like I don't, I don't think I had any issues. I feel like my childhood was good. I don't feel like I just she feel said like, that. No, no, me. Oh. I was saying, I was like, I Jessica just feel like, Kier- no, yeah. no, she's no, she, she was like, no, I'm <laughs> oh, fucked yeah. up. and I was like, I just feel like I'd like to make people laugh. But I've come to realize I am, I am really, 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 really messed up. <laughs> I was the fact that you can laugh, yeah, dude. Yeah, you're fucking, wrong. I'm not, some messed you're, up. Every comedian's got something. something. Yeah, 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 I mean, yeah. you, Jessica. Well, like, I started with Jessica Kirsten. I started comedy taking her comedy class. She wow. used to teach a comedy class. Then she took me on the road with her. She might be the only really great comic. She's awesome, too, too Jessica. Too she's awesome. Classes, and that's yeah, why. Right, like, right. Yeah. I, know, I mean, because she's so fucking yeah. funny. We went on the road, and she, you know, we, we had a great time. And then, you know, at the end, she made me eat a banana out of her. Place. That was it. <laughs> but did you cramp up on stage? I didn't. <laughs> well, there you go. Maybe Lizzo beep was on the something. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Beep that curse. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, please. Yeah. This is a clean. Po- hey, babe, it's a clean podcast, a family-friendly podcast. Um, yeah. Anytime you hear us curse, put that hey, babe over it. That's so right. We want, we want your money back, Rocket Speaking Money. Hey, babe, we we just, need your money. We just re-upped on these shirts that sold out. Yes, we did. So if you want to get this hey, babe merch, we just got a few more in. Grab that out That's on it. our website. And then where can they find you? And what, what do you want to plug? Him. Guys, I'm all over the road. MSG Theater, November 4th. Uh, can't wait. Chicago Theater, September 30th. Toronto, uh, September 21st. I'm going backwards for some reason. <laughs> Phoenix coming up. Well, the Yo- Jews, they read the opposite way. <laughs> <laughs> I got York, uh, Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. Uh, when does this come out? I don't even Tomorrow. Know. Tomorrow. Oh, yeah. Freaking help. Providence, Burlington. Albany this weekend and uh, Northampton, Mass, which could use a few more. Hell tickets. yeah, dude! You're on the, on the Founding Fathers tour. I'm, I'm all the worst places hit in the summer. They're like all college towns. Yeah. And I'm like, be, I, I work year round. And then uh, anything? Oh, L.A. coming up and something else. Uh, I'm forgetting. Oh, Ohio. I'm all over Ohio. Cincinnati, Columbus, uh, Cleveland. Indianapolis. I'm ev- I'm all Whoa. over the road. And for, for in Australia, baby. Woo! Oh, nice. In November, I'm doing all over Australia. That's going to be fun. People might not know you that watch. You have Netflix specials, you YouTube specials, yeah. and you have the We Might Be Drunk. And any, any other podcast, or is it just the We Might Be Drunk? No, right now it's just We Might Be Drunk uh, with Norman, and uh, yeah, all over the road. Netflix special. I got this uh, up on the roof. All, uh, positive influence all on YouTube, and uh, yeah. There you go, Love babe. you guys. You guys Thank you, best. Sammy. One of the best. Right Love there. you, babe. You guys the best. are the best. This been a babe. Don't be a fake, don't be a flake, don't run away from your feelings, babe.